I'm Sophie and you're watching The Science of It. There's been a lot of emphasis on green energy recently, so I was wondering, would it be possible to power a vehicle with something less harmful for the environment than petrol? Why not a potato? So this week we're going to be making potato batteries. You might have seen this before, but we're also going to find out if other fruits and vegetables could actually make a better battery than a potato. I don't know, it's hard to say, but let's get to it. This is a really simple project. Just stick the staple and the copper wire into the potato. If you don't have a zinc staple, you could also use zinc nails or screws. It works the same. Now, we'll need a voltmeter. This can help us to measure how much voltage is being supplied by the potato battery. The potato battery is a type of battery that's known as an electrochemical cell. Like in electrolysis, the zinc staple acts as the positive anode, while the copper wire acts as the negative cathode. Oxidation happens at the anode, which is because zinc loses electrons more readily than the copper. And reduction happens at the cathode, which means that the copper gains electrons. But to complete the circuit, we need something for the charge to flow through. And this is where our potato comes in. The potato acts as an electrolyte, so sulfate ions or salts in the potato move towards the zinc to balance the electron flow in the external circuit, moving towards the copper. So basically, the zinc and the copper react with each other to produce chemical energy, and this energy is converted to electrical energy through the electron transfer. So when we pick up the potato to the voltmeter, we're completing the circuit and we can see the reading on the screen. So for the potato, we're getting around 0.85 volts. This isn't bad for a potato, but let's see how our other contenders compare. First up, the potato's nemesis the sweet potato. We're doing the experiment in exactly the same way, using the same staple, same copper wire, so we have a fair test. The sweet potato is looking promising with a result of 0.9 volts. Next up we have the lemon. Our lemon is giving us a steady output of 0.94 volts. Now we have our carrot coming in at 0.86 volts and the swede just beats this with 0.88 volts. So, who is our winner? Our clear winner is the lemon, beating the sweet potato by 0.04 volts. But how does this compare to a battery that we would use normally? This battery says on the side that it should have 1.5 volts, which is more than any of our contestants today. However, we can see that the reading that we're getting is not exactly the same as what it says on the side of the battery. This might just be because the battery's been around for a while. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Would it be possible to power an electric car with a potato? Well, let's assume that when you charge your electric car, you plug it into an outlet of your house, which is usually around 120 volts. You can already tell that the potato might not be enough on its own. But assuming we want to go ahead with our potato powered car, then we could do the maths, and in order to get 120 volts, which is about enough to power an electric car, we would need 142 potatoes. That's a lot of potatoes. So if your car was plugged into your 120 volt outlet, 
it would still take about 12 hours to charge fully. So you can probably see that using potatoes to charge your electric car probably isn't the most feasible option. And it would be worth investing the time and money in exploring other forms of green energy. Thanks for watching, you can come back next week, same time, same place, and we'll be doing summer science project number four, so stay tuned until then. See ya!